Hello there, my name is Dr. Obi, also known as The Wish Doc. I'm a board certified family medicine physician. And on this channel, we'll talk about various topics, including sexual health, reproductive health, amongst other medical topics. Today, we'll be talking about genital herpes, various aspects, including the causes, how to prevent it, symptoms, treatment plans, as well as prognosis. So without wasting much time, let's get right into it. So what is genital herpes? This is a sexually transmitted disease caused by the HSV virus, which is also known as the herpes simplex virus. You have two types, you have the HSV1 and HSV2. Genital herpes is primarily caused by HSV2, but can also be caused by HSV1, which primarily affects the oral cavity and causes oral infections affecting the mouth, the gums, and the lips. But genital herpes is primarily caused by HSV2. Also note that genital herpes can be as a result of any kind of sexual intercourse, be it oral sex, anal sex, or vaginal sex, as long as it is with an infected individual. Getting infected with the virus is by coming into direct contact with the virus either through the external genitalia or through the internal mucosa in the vagina, the rectum, or the urethra. Education about the herpes simplex virus as well as genital herpes is very crucial because the number of individuals worldwide, over 400 million people, have tested positive or actually have genital herpes as a result of HSV2 infection. Here in the US, we have about one in five individuals that are infected with HSV2 leading to genital herpes and we expect to have over a million cases of new infections every year. So that is why it is very important that people are educated and enlightened about herpes and also safe sexual practices. So now let's talk about the risk factors. We have four main risk factors that put you at higher risk of getting genital herpes. This include age. It has been shown that the incidence of genital herpes is higher in sexually active younger individuals. Number two, sex. Women have a higher chance of getting infected with HSV2 when compared with men. Three, looking at race. It has been shown that African Americans have a higher incidence. And also, when you look at non-Hispanic black men, they have a higher rate of infection when compared to non-Hispanic white men. And number four, unprotected sex. If you're someone that participate with or participates in unprotected sex, you have a higher risk or higher chance of getting infected with HSV2. That should be very <laughs> obvious as you know that without protection and because transmission occurs from skin to skin contact, having unprotected sex puts you at a higher risk when compared to those that actually have protected sex. So now regarding the physical findings associated with genital herpes, we have the primary infection, which is usually the first infection you have after exposure. A lot of individuals develop the symptoms three to seven days after initial exposure and most people do not know or are not aware that they actually were exposed to this virus. The initial symptoms are usually non-specific. They could be symptoms like fatigue, body aches, headaches, you feel like you're coming down with the flu. Um, you could have palpable lymph nodes around the area, some non-specific pain. Some people tend to have pain, burning, itching, sensations that can last a few hours. And shortly after that, develop like bumps, like fluid-filled um, vesicles that can rupture and form ulcers, and then they'll cross over within the space of 48 hours. Also understand that depending on the location of your ulcers, for those that have oral lesions, sometimes the lesions could be so painful that they're unable to eat. Those that have it down in their genitals might be unable to pee. They could have burning sensation when they're peeing. They could have urinary retention because they're scared to pee because of the pain. Some people have pain during sex. Some people have pain when they're trying to poop. So depending on the location of the ulcers, that will determine some of the symptoms that you actually experience during your infection. Regarding the recurring infection, it is important to understand that you might have symptoms that are very similar to the primary infectious process and the duration of symptoms vary from individual to individual. And some individuals actually have these symptoms happen four to six times a year. And these individuals usually have to be on some kind of suppressive antiviral therapy to prevent occurrence or recurrence of symptoms, as well as to shorten the duration of symptoms and to reduce 
the risk of transmissibility to, you know, sexual partners. The most frequent locations for this recurrent infections could be like the vermilion layer, which is like this part of your lip between the regular skin and your actual lip. There's a company called the vermilion layer. If you have oral lesions, that's where, or the most common location, genital herpes, it affects your labia, it can affect the glands penis, it can affect the shaft of the penis. Also, it can affect the buttocks, especially in women. And in some people, it can affect the fingertips and also the trunk. Some people have like generalized diffuse rash. And usually in that kind of situation, it's a medical emergency and you have to be admitted to the hospital. Individuals that have a compromised immune system or are immunocompromised can present in various forms. Besides the regular presentation, they could have encephalitis, they could have meningitis, or even ocular herpes, which involves one or both eyes. Regarding how we treat genital herpes, there's certain medication, including antiviral medication like acyclovir, famcyclovir, valacyclovir, that can be used to help treat the infection. And also there are some supportive measures, including like, you know, cold compresses or a cool bath or sits bath can actually help with some of the symptoms. It is important to understand that there is no cure for herpes. So once you have it, you have it for life, but the medication regimen could help prevent recurrence of infections, could also help shorten the duration of infections and reduce the risk of transmission of the infection to your partner. Please note that it is important to avoid all kinds of sexual activity when you're symptomatic. So if you have a recurrence or symptomatic episode, just please avoid any form of sexual activity. Also notify your partner if you're having these symptoms or if you have a history of herpes infections, please notify any new partner you have. And for pregnant women, if you have no history of genital herpes and your partner does, it is recommended to abstain from sexual contact during your third trimester. And if you have a history of genital herpes, it is best for you to be on some kind of prophylactic medication regimen in your third trimester close to delivery to help reduce your risk of transmitting the virus to the baby. It is important to know that in pregnancy, women that have a history of genital herpes are usually placed on prophylactic antiviral medication after 36 weeks of pregnancy up until delivery. And if a lady has an active lesion or has active lesions or having an active outbreak, the recommendations are for an elective caesarean section to avoid exposing the baby to these active lesions and hence increasing their risk of having what we call neonatal herpes, which could be life-threatening for the baby. So now, how do we prevent genital herpes? The most effective method, I believe, is sex education by educating young adults and teenagers about genital herpes, amongst other sexually transmitted infections, as this would enlighten them about what these infections are and how to have safe sexual practices that would help prevent occurrence of these infections. Also, regarding contraceptive options, it is important to know that abstinence is the only method that will give you 100% protection against genital herpes. Condoms give you a certain level of protection, definitely better than having unprotected sex, but still, you are still at risk of getting the infection despite using contraceptives, barrier contraceptives like condoms. Thank you for watching till the end. Please don't hesitate to hit the like button, subscribe to this channel for future videos and hit the notification bell. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, please drop them down in the comment section. Have a great day. Stay happy. Stay safe. I'm the Wizdoc. Bye.